Hi, I'm Jonathan Lee from Portland.org and you're looking at the new facelifted Mazda 3. Now the 3 has been fairly successful over here and Mazda has resisted the urge to make big changes to the way it looks or drives. So there are a few exterior and interior changes and some new technology. But overall, it still looks and feels pretty much the same as before. Now, let's start with pricing. Now, the base sedan costs 111,000 ringgit. This high-spec sedan model is priced at 126,000 ringgit and the hatchback costs 129,000 ringgit. Now, let's talk looks. So over here, you'll see that there are new LED headlights. These are adaptive units with automatic high beam. And you can see that, the, that there's a chrome line that flows into the new um, grille over here. You can also see the uh, chrome trim over here where the indicator is. And there are also LED fog lights. In the engine compartment, it's the same as before. There's a 2-litre direct-injected Skyactiv G petrol 4-cylinder engine making 162 horsepower and a 210 newton meters of torque. There's also a six-speed automatic transmission sending power to the front wheels. What's new is the new G vectoring control system, which you can see over here, but we'll have a look at it later on. Let's have a look at the side of the car, which has very few changes. Believe it or not, these are new 18-inch alloy wheels. They come in the same color and the, sort of the same look, but a slightly thinner spoke. There's also a new indicator strip on the door mirrors, so that's pretty much it for the side. Now, at the back, the hatchback gets the, the new rear bumper, but the sedan doesn't get it. So it looks almost identical to the preceding model. Now, there's one new change. There are fog lights on, the, uh, on all models this time. So that's one way to differentiate the new one from the old one. Boot space is the same as before again, which is to say, not very good. There's a 400 litre boot, which is fairly small. It's uh, quite a bit smaller than its rivals and also smaller than even the B-segment sedans below it. And it doesn't help that the aperture is quite small and the load lip is quite high as well. Now that we have a look at the outside of the car, let's see how the changes that Mazda has made affect the way it drives. Now the big change is what Mazda calls the G-Vectoring Control System. Now what this system does is that it reduces engine torque to put more weight onto the front wheels when you're turning into a corner. What you do feel is that there's a little more steering response because there's more grip. But unless you're driving both the new car and the old car back to back, you can't really feel that much of a difference. That is by design. Mazda says that it's supposed to feel more um, natural in its responses instead of being uh, superhuman in its abilities. Otherwise, handling is pretty much the same as before. The steering is quick and accurate and there's lack of body roll and plenty of grip so it's real fun to hustle around in the bends. Less so of the ride because it still feels a bit brittle and it lacks the premium feel of some of its other rivals. As we mentioned earlier, the engine is unchanged so it still provides plenty of mid-range punch even for a naturally aspirated engine. However, it is slightly blunted by this six-speed automatic which feels slightly lethargic and favours higher gears for better fuel economy. Now, you can change this by pushing the sport button, which is new on this car, but while that does help increase the response, it also pushes the revs too high up for daily driving. So it's not something that you would use day to day. Now, the Mazda 3 hasn't been known for its refinement, and this really isn't that much different. There's still plenty of road noise from the 18-inch wheels and the wide, low-profile tyres. Although wind noise and engine noise is fairly refined. Now, there are a fair few changes over inside as well. There's a new thinner steering wheel, some trim changes here and there, uh, a new colour head-up display and a new centre console. The reason for that is there's no handbrake. There's now an electric parking brake and that means there's more room for more stuff. For example, here, the sliding cover for the cup holder. Fit and finish is pretty much the same as before. You've got a few nice leather trim around here on the center console and on the doors. Apart from that, it's pretty much the same. Uh, build quality is pretty excellent and there's some soft touch plastics over the top, but some of the hard plastics here you wouldn't find in some of its other rivals. The MZD Connect infotainment screen is uh, the same as before. It's controlled by this BMW style uh, control dial over here and on this touchscreen over here. Now, it's still 
pretty much the best in its segment in terms of ease of use, being fairly easy to navigate around as well as being handy to control and to connect your phone via Bluetooth. Safety wise, all models get six airbags, ABS and stability control. This uh, sedan high spec gets the uh, iActiveSense safety feature. You can see here, this uh, little console here, and that provides autonomous emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, and lane departure warning. Now, the good news is that the hatchback now gets this as well, which explains the premium over the sedan. Now, let's talk space. Those at the front get plenty of headroom and legroom, as well as plenty of adjustment, both in the seats and the steering wheel. It's not so much you can say about the back though, because I'm five feet nine, and I don't have much legroom or shoulder room. And because the rear roof slopes so much, there's not much headroom to spare either. Side windows also slope pretty far up. Those at the back will feel really claustrophobic and it's not really good for children either. And there's no rear air con vents as well, which is a real shame considering that most of its rivals in this segment now have it. So overall, the Mazda 3 still retains much of the same characteristics as its predecessor. It's slightly better to drive thanks to the g vectoring control and slightly better to look at. On the downsides, the rear is still really cramped and the ride is a bit harsh. So if you're looking for a comfortable, practical family car, there are better options out there. But if you're looking for a driver's car, first and foremost, then it's worth to give this car a second look. So that's really all there is to it about the new Mazda 3 facelift. I'm Jonathan Lee from Portan.org, signing off. Thanks for watching.